Okay, well what I'm going to do now is bevel the edge from here to the reference mark that I made using the edge beveler. And to use this tool, you're going to hold it in at about a 45 degree angle and you're going to run down this edge. And you're just going to take it off to where we stopped. And that is going to give you a little round over on this particular portion. Like I said, I'm not going all the way around this yet because we have yet to put this piece and get it stitched on. So I started that bevel at the mark I made here and then I terminated up here. So what I need to do now is I'm going to go ahead and dye this edge mahogany, which is the color I'm using, and let that dry. And then I'm going to come in with little beeswax and I'm going to rub that edge being very careful not to get any any onto this top right here because I'm going to be dyeing this whole area I don't know of a better way to do this because I cannot as far as I know burnish this edge once it's on here so I'm going to go ahead and do this in advance and dye it from here to here put some beeswax on it like I said and then I'll use the edge slicker and I'll vigorously do this by hand to burnish that edge so we get a nice edge down through here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll maybe do a quick shot of the end result and we'll take it from there. Okay, well here's a quick shot of the edge that has been dyed and burnished. Um, what I did here is I took a wool dauber and I just carefully went along the, the edge with the dye and as it was drying I went ahead and used the edge slicker and started slicking it down and it actually burnished it quite well uh, but I did come back with the beeswax and like I said I carefully put it on the edge just to not get it over here because the stain won't take later and I hope I didn't make a mistake there but I rubbed it on and then rubbed vigorously with this edge slicker and burnished this edge and you know you can't you can't see this obviously but I can feel it and man it feels great it looks great uh, there's absolutely no fur or fibers sticking out of it I mean it really does look top-notch and that's the first time I've ever done that so it's actually really easy to do uh, so I'm gonna move on and give an idea on what I'm doing next obviously if I get this oriented properly this is where this will be stitched on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bevel the edge all the way around here and complete this and then I'm going to cut a groove around here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the beveling and I'll try to keep my head out of the way. But it's kind of tough. So I'm just going to run around the edge of this and take a bevel off. You know, this is all new to me, so I'm just making it up as I go. I don't believe my tool is quite sharp enough yet, but I'll work on that later. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Just beveling that edge. The long runs are quite easy. Uh, the corners are a little bit difficult to do. It's probably me. Or the tool. Could be both. I'm going to blame it on the tool. Can't be me, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and bevel around here. Like so. back and clean it up a little bit. I had a little bit of extra hanging off in that drum sanding. It didn't quite take the top of it off. Once I got that off it seems to be cleaning up quite nice. So I guess that's just a something to consider. Okay. So now I have a nice bevel all the way around this edge and that is going to allow me to come in with the grooving tool which is here. 
Now I'm left-handed, so I'm going to be kind of doing a crossover technique because, you know, in some in some tools I'm ambidextrous, but on this one, it's specifically made for a right-handed person. You know, you cannot flip this blade over to where I can naturally come around the outside of here. So I'm going to have to work this way, and I'll try to keep a keep it out of out of the way my arm so from what I gather you're actually wanting to whatever groove you're gonna make in here you want it to come in whatever the thickness is of what you're sewing together now I'm using pieces off this hide and I can look right now that the piece I cut for the reinforcement is not the same weight or thickness as this piece. It may not show up, uh, maybe if I hold it this way. You know, I'm a good 16th inch shallow on this. Well, I picked this off a piece of the end, you know, to try to conserve what I had. So we're just going to go with that. Uh, but anyway, for reference, you know, whatever your thickness is, let's say you had a quarter inch of leather, that's how far you want this to come in by my reading. So I need to take a quick measurement on this just to get an idea on where I'm at. And it looks like I am, well, a quarter inch. So to adjust this tool, you loosen this up and you can slide this blade in and out. So from the center of this hole to the inside of this nub right here, that's where you're going to measure. So I need to shorten it up just a little. And that's a quarter inch. So I'm going to lock this in real tight. And to use this tool, I'm actually going to be doing this piece. You're going to put it on the edge and as you run down here, it's actually going to lift that leather out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and show this all the way around, providing it works well for me. And can you see that leather curling out of there? And I'm just slowly coming around. And I'm going to work my way around the corner. And it's kind of hard to do. I kind of missed that one right there. The corners are a little bit hard, but I'm just going to do the best I can. And that really is ugly, but oh well. And I'll come in this way. And just work my way around. certainly does work better on a burnished edge, I can say that much. And I think a lot of my imperfections will hide, hopefully. I may go back and try to clean them up a little bit. Like I said, I'm having to do this kind of overhand and it's just not, it doesn't feel right to me. You know, it doesn't feel natural and it probably should. clearly not correct especially down in here so I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit and I guess this is where practice makes perfect but in short that's how you use the tool edge okay. and you know maybe you're supposed to go around it really light and take a very small bit I was pressing down pretty hard and I'm, I'm overdoing it here I'm just trying to clean up some of my imperfections yeah a really light touch actually takes off a 
nice little curl. I was probably pressing too hard on that. Like I said, this is all new to me. You know, so it's probably best to take a light touch and then come back and do it again and take a little bit more off. All in all, you know, for a, a first holster, this is probably going to work out fine. Technique comes later. Okay, so now I have this grooved around there. Now I'm going to come in with a stitching tool. I'm not sure which one I have on here. I'm just going to use the one that's on it. It's the same one I used to mock up the holster. And I'm going to pick a corner, which is right here. And I'm going to start one of the points right in that corner. And I am going to just push down and ride right around in that groove. Just work my way around here best I can to keep it centered up. Getting ready to terminate it where I started. Slowly coming just like that. These probably do not pick up, but now I have a series of holes equally spaced all the way down in this groove, and those are going to be my reference marks to uh, pierce it with an awl. So I believe now what I'm going to end up doing is. figuring out how to secure this because I do need to secure this right in this area and once I get this secured with that slot cut then I will be able to glue this piece to this with contact cement and then I'll run all these stitches out by hand.